Okay, welcome to another presentation uh, now about uh, the Python programming language and how to how to make uh, Python uh, faster. Uh, my name is Paweł Cisnowski and uh, currently I work um, for Red Hat on some AI based system because this year everybody works on something that's related to AI and uh, we use Python uh, there and Personally, I, I have, the, I would say, classic uh, love-hate relationship with Python because the language itself is, is pretty good. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to, to write uh, complex code in it, but uh, the resulting applications uh, are usually slow. So we try to find uh, technologies how to, uh, that allow us uh, to make uh, Python, uh, Python itself uh, faster. So, Where's the problem? This is very simple example uh, written in Python, some function that accepts two, two numbers and uh, well, add, add these two numbers and uh, print the result. No, nothing special. But actually, I, I am wrong. This, uh, this function doesn't just add two numbers. It can, it can uh, uh, join two strings. It, it can join, join two, two lists, for example. It can, it can do many things, not just uh, uh, adding, adding numbers. And Python interpreter needs to take care of all the, all the possible ways how to, how to basically evaluate x plus, x plus y. Additionally, you can create your own uh, class. You, you, can, you can implement the plus operator for your class. So, so it's pretty complicated. The bytecode um, that's uh, generated by Python is, um, is too universal. It doesn't contain any information about types. You, 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 don't, have to, uh, you don't have to fully understand uh, what's going on. It basically tries to load um, two, two variables, x and y. Uh, it calls some binary operation plus and uh, return, return the value. Uh, Python has to do it. Uh, Python basically has to delete all informations about styles because because it needs to be it needs to be too, too universal. Uh, next thing uh, we can we can create a, as I said uh, some some class that um, overrides the ad additional operator the plus operator and uh, Python needs to needs to uh, uh, call call your uh, add method. So all this uh, all this uh, calls to add two numbers function uh, basically basically should work. So we can add two, two numbers, exactly two numbers. We can join two strings. We can join two uh, lists, uh, two tuples, uh, and so on and so on. OK, the second problem why Python is slow is if you use multi-training. You can, you can say, OK, the, the Python itself, the interpreter is, is a bit slow, but by using multi-training, I can, uh, I can basically make the code uh, parallel, fully, fully parallel, but by running multiple threads for, I don't know, machine learning purposes, let's say. So if, if I have uh, 32, uh, 32 cores, in theory, uh, my program should be, should be much faster. So we can use the uh, threading module, the standard module that, um, uh, that can create a new thread, start new thread, and you can you can write some codes to cooperate the threads, uh, wait for for the threads to finish, and so on. Uh, uh, the problem is is uh, is there in Python itself in Python interpreter there's a, a technology named uh, global interpreter lock. It's it's hated technology by by everyone basically. Um, why? Because uh, it's it's a really lock. It's it's a lock um, mechanism inserted into into by Python bytecode that basically makes sure that uh, that uh, functions some, some functions will be uh, won't won't run in parallel. So by using the multi-threading in a standard Python interpreter, you just basically use one one CPU core, not much, and the CPU core uh, just um, uh, sp split split the computation uh, among multiple threads, so so the threads are just concurrent, not not fully parallel. The same is true for the for the async. The the new Python uh, 
contains the async and uh, await uh, keyword. So in theory, you can you can create a synchronous code, but still the global interpreter lock is there and probably will continue to to, to be used. Okay, my, my goal is to find find some tools uh, that um, allow me to write code in Python, but uh, the code should be as fast as uh, as programs written in C programming language, which is possible sometimes. Not not not, not in all cases. Uh, it needs some work, but but it's possible. So there are. Uh, some solutions to, to the original two problems. Uh, we can use uh, ahead of time compilers to compile uh, your your code before it's executed. So it's there are some technologies that allow uh, to to transform your code to C, for example, compile the C code and and run the run the native native machine code that's generated by it. It's also possible to use some technologies that. Um, uh, that's based on just-in-time compiler. Just-in-time co compiler basically, you, 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 run, you run your program written in Python and the just-in-time compiler basically select part of the code that needs to be compiled in a runtime and tries to co compile it with knowing all the information about what, what are you running basically. For example, the function that adds two numbers if, if I really uh, call this function with numbers and nothing else, it can be compiled efficiently. And uh, the global interpreter lock. Yeah, currently uh, there's a Python implementation without without global interpreter lock. It allows you to run multi-threading um, applications, and we will see how, how good or, or bad this solution is. So okay, what, what's AOT? Uh, it means uh, uh, ahead of time compilation, nothing special. C code, Rust code, Go code needs to be compiled ahead of time. Usually it's compiled on CI or on developer machine, and then the resulting code can, can be run everywhere. Um, the ahead of time compilation can, can be done also on startup. Some, sometimes, yeah, on, on startup you can, you can say, well, this is a my project written in Python, let's compile it. Um, usually the ahead of time compilers uh, have more aggressive um, optimizations because there's a time for it, because it's, it runs just once, not, not in every run. So it can be time consuming, which sometimes we don't care, but there's uh, one project here where the compilation takes several minutes or uh, even a half an hour. So sometimes it's it's really slow, and okay, we, we can we can compile some application on on some CI CD, and so on. What uh, ahead of time comp uh, comp compilers are not able to do fully is uh, so-called PGO profile guide guided uh, optimizations. Sometimes it's possible, but usually not. And the uh, solutions I I I will show. Uh, don't, uh, don't use it. Profile guided optimizations really look at how the code is used. Because there's uh, uh, differences between the static code, as, as you can see it in, uh, in your uh, IDE, and, and the real, real run of the code. Just in time, it, it, it's, it's a bit different. It's uh, just in time compilation is performed during the execution, so the application is started and then the just-in-time compilation happen every time you start the application. So this is, uh, this is uh, problematic because um, it doesn't allow you to do many aggressive optimizations that take, takes time. Uh, yeah, th there's a possibility to perform speculative optimizations. For example, the function that adds two numbers can be inlined into the into the main code. Yeah, it, it can it can do a, a, some inlining, and let's say after one hour, the application call this function with different data types. So uh, so the just-in-time compiler is able to to do backtracking, or it can compile the function sever, uh, it, using several basically base or branches. 
Okay, next optimization on Python without uh, global interpreter log. Uh, the first thing, uh, the recent C Python, C Python 3.12, uh, uh, is, is optimized. Uh, so, so the global interpreter log is not used everywhere for each, uh, each thread, but um, it's unique per interpreter. So if you run from your, from your program, if you run multiple Python interpreters, uh, each interpreter will get its own uh, global interpreter log, so you can you can manage to to run some uh, some part of the code uh, in parallel, truly in parallel. Uh, there's also fork of the standard C Python without without uh, global interpreter log, so you can basically uh, you, you can clone this. Um, this, uh, this uh, form of C Python, build it locally, and you can you can run it. And I, I will show you results of benchmarks. And uh, the existing uh, compilers for Python, AOT and J uh, JIT compilers, uh, support something like no JIL keyword or no JIL decorator that allows you to say, well, this function doesn't call any. Uh, an internal internal uh, Python thingy, so it it can be compiled without without the global interpreter log uh, inside. So if you have some some uh, block of code that do just some computations, nothing else, uh, you you can basically uh, drop uh, gil from from the, this part. Okay, which technologies are available today? Uh, let's talk about uh, Cyton. It's not C Python. It's uh, Cyton without the P. Number Nuitka and MyPyC. So there, there are multiple technologies there. Let's start with uh, Cyton. Currently, the Cyton uh, is a superset of the standard Python programming language, which means that every program uh, written in Python is compatible with Cyton, but not vice versa, because Cyton contains some, some new uh, decorators, keywords, and, and so on. Internally, uh, how it works, um, your Python code is uh, uh, compiled or, or transpiled into, into C, into standard C, and the C is, uh, is uh, compiled using you know, LLVM or, or GCC or other uh, C compiler into, into native code, and it, it, it can be started. Um, to help uh, Cyton to, to generate optimal code, uh, it's usually needed to, to use type hints, which is not new. It's, it's in Python already. So, so Python, Python programming language supports uh, type hints, and you can, you can use them in, uh, in Cyton as well. There's also no gil uh, uh, word, that, uh, and you can mark some some functions uh, in in Python that will be compiled without without the use the, of global interpreter log, and there's the ability to call native functions, so that that's a good thing as well. For example, if you have a code that prints a lot informations, and if uh, you can usually not use the print. Uh, Function the standard print function from Python, but you can you can call uh, fprintf or putes uh, function from uh, standard C library. Okay, how it works? Uh, this is um, uh, this is almost the, the same uh, same code as, as before, but but instead of def, we use the cf keyword here. It's the old C uh, Cyton um, uh, Cyton uh, uh, syntax. The new syntax is a bit different. I, I, I'm not sure if it's visible, but there's a decorator named uh, Cyton.cfunc. It says that uh, this uh, this uh, function needs to be uh, compiled compiled into into native language. And this is the result uh, resulting C code. It's quite long. It does nothing, almost nothing. But in the in the middle, you can see that some magic function pi number at is, is called with, with the parameters. So this is not, uh, this is definitely not, not the fastest code you can, you can, uh, you can create. Yeah, and there's some, something about the references, the references, everything, everything's there. So definitely not, not something you will write in C, in native C. So what, what can you do? You can, you can add uh, explicit type par um, parameter types, type hints, 
again, this is the old Cyton uh, syntax that's still used in reality. This is why, why I keep it there. Uh, so you, you specify that the x and y are really integers. Um, and this is a new, new syntax based on uh, Python. So it's uh, fully compatible with Python. Yeah, so this, this is how type things uh, are written in Python. And the resulting C code is uh, a bit better, huh? but, but it's still not, uh, it's still not uh, optimal. Because here you can see that, that some function is, well, uh, the parameters are at. That's not a problem. Uh, but uh, the parameters are uh, the, the resulting uh, the result of, of, uh, of addition is uh, transformed into Python object. So still still not good. Yeah, there are some differences. Uh, okay. Last thing or almost the last thing, we can say the result of the function will be integer. Again, old syntax, old uh, uh, Cyton syntax, new Cyton syntax. The the return, the type of return value is um, written uh, on the right side uh, after the after the arrow. So you said this is really function that adds two numbers, nothing else. Yeah? Just two numbers, not none values can be can be used. Nothing, nothing like this. And this is the resulting C code. We are here. Th that's here because yeah, there are some code to who care because uh, because uh, uh, C compiler will get rid of of the local code to that just they they just uh, skip skip line nothing else. So th this is what basically what what you will write in 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 real C. Just some variable names x r equals to x plus y. Yeah. Just the, there are some magic magic um, <coughs> uh, names here, but 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 this this is the resulting code. It can be made faster, basically. Uh, it's also possible to disable the global interpreter log. In th this case, it doesn't make se make sense because we don't call any any internal Python function, but you can use Nugil no, uh, keyword there. Or if you want to be compatible with standard Python. There's a deco decorator name, siton.nogeo. So that's it. That's, uh, that's uh, uh, about how to, how, to, how to make some code uh, uh, optimized. But there, there, there are problems. For example, this, this function at two numbers tries to, tries to print the parameter x, why not? And then it returns the additional of x, x plus y. In Python, that, that's not a problem. Yeah, this is the classic Python code. Um, but if we try to compile it, uh, Cyton won't be, won't be happy. Yeah, it prints many, many errors for the, same, for the same line. And it basically says, well, print is the internal Python function. It needs, uh, you, you can just, just uh, print integer uh, variables, for example. So how to, how to use something, something faster and compatible? We can call the print, printf function. If, if, you, if you know C, this is the standard function from C uh, library. You, you just need to import it from libc.stdio, uh, which is not a real package, but it's a, uh, let's say, mo mocked package uh, in, in uh, that uh, that contains all the standard C, C functions. So you can you can do it. You you don't have to worry about GIL and nothing else. Okay, this is the new new syntax. Uh, is is the same basically. And this is a resulting C code. But if you if you want to to see it again, some magic magic numbers uh, magic names generated by by Cyton, But but the code itself is is optimal. Okay, next, uh, next technology. It's named uh, Namba. It's just in time compiler for Python. It's very easy. All you need to do is to use this JIT decorator. You need to import it and uh, use it at the beginning of some function. That, that's all you, you need to do. And the function that uh, use it, uses this decorator is uh, 
compile it, compile it just in time. It also contains some form of the standard print function that, that's uh, simpler and faster. Uh, it has some, uh, it's a bit different from the standard print function, but if, if you just need to print something while you are not looking or something like this, it, it's possible. Uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. If you install number, uh, all you need to do is, is to just uh, use this, this decorator. Uh, next project is MyPy. The, the primary goal of this project is to is to check uh, type hints in Python. So this is something something different from what, what we what we are going to do. But the MyPy project contains the My, MyPy C tool, and it's a, uh, ahead of time compiler. So it's a bit similar to Python. It's uh, heavily based on type hints. Python can compile any Python code. MyPy C not. If you don't use uh, type hints everywhere, the MyPyC won't be uh, won't be able to to compile your code. So for a larger project, it's problematic. But it's possible to to use it. And the last technology is named Nuitka. I think it's a Russian word or a Russian name. Uh, so Nuitka, and it's um, again uh, uh, ahead of time compiler. What what good is it's um, it's able to compile all your project into into one file. So if you have project that contain uh, that uses a lot of packages, a lot of um, third uh, party packages like I don't know NumPy, some AI based uh, uh, packages, uh, everything can be can be compiled into one file that can be distributed then or run in Docker or Podman or whatever. Um, uh, the problem is that it's very slow. The compilation process is, is, is very slow. So I tried to, to do it for some some my project, and it's up to 30 minutes. It, it's not something you, you 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 will need to do every day for every uh, change in your code. Okay, let's do some comparison. I, I created some uh, some benchmark, some artificial ben benchmark that's based on uh, nested loops, conditions, and heavy floating point operations. So this is what the benchmark uh, computes. Uh, Mandelbrot said, but but it's not it's not relevant, probably. And this is the code uh, that um, we will basically will benchmarking this code. You, you can see nested loops, free nested loops, lot of lot of computations there. Well, not a lot of, but yeah, some, something is hap happening there. OK, we can, we can update the code uh, for Cyton. Uh, so it's a bit larger, because we need to specify types for all local variables as well, not, not just for parameters, but for all local variables. And in the end, it's compiled into something that's unreadable, but good. It's optimized. Uh, really, yeah, that, that's something optimized. OK, let's look at benchmarks. Uh, I will show you some, some graphs that uh, contains m many results. Uh, I written the same benchmark in NCC. I, I tried to write it as, uh, with, with all the optimizations there. So I, I write it in NCC and in Python. Uh, we will run the benchmarks uh, against various Python interpreters because they said that new Python interpreters are better than the old ones. So let's see. And yeah, we have uh, we have results for MyPyC, for Numba. There are three uh, um, three variants for Nuitka and for Cyton. Uh, for Cyton, uh, uh, I try to compile an alternate variant without. Type hints, which type hints, and with all the optimizations and no gil. Okay, so let's look. I'm not sure how uh, how visible is it. Uh, there's a lot of things going on, but on the ba basically the graph shows how the how the benchmark is uh, fast uh, for uh, larger and la large inputs. Uh, usually, you want to be as as low as possible because uh, because on y, y uh, axis uh, there's a computation time in seconds, and the best is uh, of course native code. There are some Python variants, 
and my base C, and so on. I will show you a better graph, probably. Yeah. I'll, I'll do it. Just look at uh, ahead of time compilers. Again, there's a not native code, it's the fastest one. Cyton is very good. Uh, my PC doesn't. Yeah, my PC is, is uh, pretty slow, or slower than expected. And no, it goes uh, in, in between. So it's, it's some, somewhere in between. Um, uh, what, what's interesting is that ahead of time compilers are usually good. Uh, be, uh, good for something that, that uh, is started several times. So if, if, you, if you need to start something uh, several times, use a uh, ahead-of-time compiler. Just-in-time compiler has some start type time. You can see it. The, all the blue, uh, blue columns are uh, number, uh, results for number. So number, uh, programs that use number, which is uh, just-in-time compiler, takes, let's say, from one second to five seconds or more, in startup, it, it does nothing, for no, nothing uh, from your code because it needs to compile it first. So just in, just in time compilers are good for something that runs for a longer period of time, not for, I don't know, to implement something like LS or something, something like this that's called several times per second. So not, 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 not good on this, uh, this thing. And yeah, let's compare interpreters and compilers. This is just uh, results for, for compilers. So you can see that indeed, uh, newest Python, 3.11 uh, and 12, th these Python uh, interpreters are a bit faster. So that's good. Yeah? So, so just by updating Python, you can say to your boss, I am done. Uh, this is compilation. Native code is very, very fast, and it's comparable to Python, the optimized Python code. Uh, uh, because the result of site and compilation is the same as, as my, my C code, or al almost the same. And yeah, let's look at, uh, that's not interesting. Yeah, let, let's, um, let's do some computation using multiple threads. So there's something, something uh, based uh, on multiple threads, the bubble sort. Um, and uh, there are, there are uh, results. If you, if you use the classic C Python uh, with uh, global interpreter log, the bubble sort takes uh, 200 uh, seconds. If you use the Python without global interpreter log, it's faster, but not much. It's just three times faster on a machine that has uh, 32 cores. So it's not as good as, as people would expect, probably, but it's better than, than nothing. Yeah, to have something that, uh, that runs three times faster with just using the dif uh, different uh, C Python interpreter, it, it might be good. But you, you need to invest your time to, to use, uh, use multi-threaded code or, or to change your code to use multi-threaded. Oh, that's basically it. But yeah, there are some other benchmarks. I, I tried to... I, I really tried to to force the Python without the global interpreter git to be to be fa uh, to be much faster than the standard um, uh, C Python, but it's almost impossible. Usually the code is just two or three times faster for some reason. I, I don't know. It's something inside the uh, the Python itself. So yeah, conclusion, uh, NoGill, if, if, if you use uh, NoGill variant, it's, it helps, but not, not, not so much. Don't, don't expect that, that the speed up will be 10 times or 20 times. Uh, it, it's, we are not there yet. But we have solutions, personally, I, what I prefer is to use Cyton, uh, but it's basically, its compilation is fast, it supports type hints, and uh, the resulting speed is almost similar to, 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 uh, to native C variant, let's say. That's it. <laughs> okay, we have time for questions. Yes, sir. 
can you actually apply those methods to your AI project or whatever and what you take to there? Yeah, the question is uh, if we actually apply this. Yes and no. <laughs> uh, for, let's say, official images that are shipped to customers, basically, uh, it's not used. Uh, but um, but I, I'm trying to, to force the team, to, to push the team to, to, to use it. So. so we are in the middle. Yeah, the, the question is uh, my opinion about Mojo. <laughs> to be honest, I tried it as well, but uh, but the results ah, it was similar to uh, to my PyC. So, so somewhere not not bad, not 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 the best. Yeah, so so I should include it. It's, sorry, not have time to. Yeah, so the question is that if you use some framework or library, if the library needs to be touched or changed to, to support, uh, support these technologies. For my PyC, yes, which is uh, uh, if, if you use some framework that doesn't use um, type hints, it will be problematic in my PyC. In Cyten, it's not necessary, but the, but the code won't be super optimal. But it's still, is, it will be better than, than the classic C Python. And for just in time compilers like Numba, it's not needed. It can, can do it. And again, some frameworks use uh, native code already. For example, NumPy. Yeah, so if I understand the question, is that uh, if we don't um, uh, don't measure the startup time. If we, if we measure just just the uh, longer applications that uh, runs on longer time, if the if the uh, number is is good enough, yes. Uh, sorry, I didn't show you the benchmarks, but yeah, there's a there's something I I call sweet spot for number, and the sweet spot is the the crossing there uh, the, where the uh, uh, it's a, Bright, bright blue line is, is the number result. So the startup time makes basically push push the line um, up a bit. Uh, for, it's a five seconds, so so there's a five second delay at the beginning. But you can see that then the the performance is pretty good. Yeah, it's almost line liner. So there are many sweet spots where number basically it's better than, uh, it will be better than my PC. Yeah, definitely better than, than NumPy C. So yeah, for, for something that, that uh, took longer, it's, it's, it's better. Yeah. Yeah, so the question, if, if, if the module can be basically yeah, precompiled uh, uh, in Cyton and then used in standard Python, basically. Yes, but basically you, you need to call the, the compiled uh, functions. So the functions will be basically written in C. So you, you, you need to use uh, some, some technologies like FFI or something like this, or CFFI to call, call the native functions. So, so yeah, it's possible, but it's, it needs your help, basically. Yes? No, so the question was about my experience with... Yeah, Grapa, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> That's something uh, I would like to... Well, personally, I, I would like to know much more about Graal itself, the technology, but, but not. Sorry. Yes, please. Yeah, so the, so the question is, it's about the standard C Python, right? Yeah, that if some, some part of C Python can't be done in parallel, I think yes, the global interpreter log, I think will be there. Will be there. So I think that the easiest thing 
for you is to make your program at least asynchronous to using, uh, by using the async await. It's usually not, um, not too complicated to, to identify the code and then hope that, uh, that the new, new Python interpreters will be better because they, they are. There are some improvements definitely there. And uh, as I said, nobody likes global interpreter log, <laughs> but it's, it's there. It's something. It, yeah, I th think it is. Yeah, yeah. It's not included there because um, some some packages we, we use, the AI packages, uh, are, are still tied to Python 3.11. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it works in uh, Python 3.12, but not not in the newest part. But yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you very much again, and.